mysteries are what we are here for. There are places in this world that can still make us ponder and wonder, is there truth to what we've heard? And one of those places, as we slowly make our way back to traveling around the world, is a place that many would rather not dare the chance of flying or sailing over, just in case. That place is the Bermuda Triangle. The words make us think of lost ships, echoes of fading radio transmissions, and travelers who are never seen again. It's an area that has many questions and just as many theories as to what it truly is. On this episode of Mythories, we're going to journey into the unknown's most famous getaway, a place that some never come back from. Join us as we dive into the Bermuda Triangle. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for watching Mythories and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now, back to the show. Stories of the Bermuda Triangle have been told for hundreds of years, before the term Bermuda Triangle had even been coined. One of the earliest, actually, was recorded by Christopher Columbus during his journey to what would become America. Columbus wrote that he saw a massive fireball land in the area just southeast of what is now Florida. While it would stand this was probably a meteor of some kind, it would fall under the heading of an unidentified flying object. Columbus would also note seeing strange lights out on the water for some weeks after this. His compass wasn't reading quite right either. The description of the Bermuda Triangle wasn't actually used until the mid-1960s in a magazine piece written by Vincent Gaddis, but strange things happened in that area of the water for decades prior. One of the more well-known disappearances happened in 1812 and involved the family of a former vice president. Aaron Burr's daughter, Theodosia, boarded the ship The Patriot on New Year's Eve of that year. She was traveling with a close friend of her husband's named Tim Green. They left out of South Carolina for New York and were never seen again. The Patriot never made it, and none of its passengers were ever found. Only three years later, the USS Epriver, was a crew of over 130 men on board, vanished while carrying a peace treaty between North America and North Africa. In 1881, the Ellen Austin discovered an abandoned ship sailing in the waters. They sent over their salvage crew to sail the ship back with them to New York. The ship got separated from them and was later found, again, abandoned with the salvage crew missing this time. While a number of seafaring ships have either disappeared or been found abandoned over the years, aircraft have also been lost in the area. Flight 19 is one of the most famous. Flight 19 was actually the code for five bomber planes that took off from a naval base in Florida in December of 1945 and never returned. All five planes vanished, and all 14 passengers were also never heard from again. These trainees were with an experienced lead pilot bomber named Commander Charles Taylor. The planes were in good working order, and the weather was fine. As the flight progressed, things started going wrong. At one point, Taylor radioed, saying that his compass was having issues. This is something that Columbus had noted about the area. And as communications continued, it was clear that Commander Taylor had found himself lost and couldn't find land. Eventually, communications stopped with the planes. The weather did start getting bad at this point. Eventually, the naval base sent out water planes to search for the now lost bombers. These were two Martin Mariners who were able to float on the water as well as fly. That's when the story gets even more bizarre. While the two Mariners were searching, one of the planes, at some point, disappeared as well. So now, not only were the planes of Flight 19 gone, but one of their possible rescuers had vanished. Reports came in from a freighter that was nearby of an explosion and a fireball sound familiar, crashing into the water. They even said there were traces of oil on the water, but the other mariners stated they didn't see anything like that on the waves. Either way, it was concluded that the explosion was the other search plane. But what happened? No one seems to really know. The planes were both in perfect condition when they left the base. There's still no answer on what caused it or how it happened. But what is interesting is, again, much like Columbus's description, there were weird lights out above the water being reported that night. This time they were supposedly green in color and floating above the ocean. At this point though, I guess we'll never really know. So far, we've only gone into detail of ships that either fly above the water or float on it, but there have also been submarines that have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. In 1968, the USS Scorpion, a nuclear sub that was patrolling in the area, disappeared. Theories have been banded about, including the possibility of Russian involvement. The wreckage of the submarine, which had close to 100 men on board at the time of the incident, was found some months later. The submarine was in two large pieces, seemingly split in half. Again, the theories of what happened have been banded about, but no final answer has been found for what caused the incident. Incidents in that area continue to this day. 
These are only a few of the strange occurrences and outright tragedies that have happened in the area. And while many say all of these incidents can be explained away in some fashion, there are many who say they cannot be, and that the importing of lights and other strange phenomena lead us to some other paths to explain what happens in the Bermuda Triangle. Numerous books about the Bermuda Triangle theories have been written, and it would take just as long to list them as it would to list the number of strange events that have happened there over the years. So I'll break it down into some specific categories. Aliens. Yep, the old go-to for so many mysteries in our world. The recording of the lights in the sky, as well as the quote-unquote ball of fire, lend a bit of belief that there could be aliens patrolling the area of the triangle. The missing people from perfectly intact boats and vessels does sound familiar to an abduction scenario as well. Atlantis. Another go-to for so many theories on subjects, Atlantis has a more physical reason for being thought of as the cause of the issues within the triangle. Theories claim that leftover technology hidden beneath the waves is what is causing the issues with all the crafts. The discovery of the rock formation known as the Bimini Road in the late 60s made the Atlantis theory even more popular with believers in the lost civilization, latching onto that idea that the road was man-made. Time travel. This one is some true science fiction level theory, but again, there's just a lot of oddness to some of the discoveries. The missing people, for instance, in so many of these scenarios. The time travel theory is of a mind that there's a sort of bizarre wormhole that is sucking these ships and people into an alternate space. It's one of the more far-fetched theories. Granted, we've covered aliens here, but it has some ardent supporters. While these are the more supernaturally inclined theories, there are a number of naturally occurring explanations. The area is a busy one, and simple issues of the everyday nature, such as equipment malfunction, people making mistakes, weather changes, and man-made disasters such as a torpedo blowing up an enemy vessel could also explain a lot of these events. What it doesn't explain, though, is why there have been so many reports of lights from the 1400s to recent time. What really was the large ball of fire and or light that was seen hundreds of years ago? And why would a ship appear completely unharmed and missing an entire group of people with no trace of injury or ill will anywhere? The Bermuda Triangle and the mystery that swirls eternally in its waters has inspired pop culture in ways just as vast as the area it covers. Many documentaries about the Triangle have been produced, as well as entire episodes of series dedicated to it. One favorite is the Leonard Nimoy classic, In Search Of, which focuses greatly on the possibility of aliens. A feature-length documentary in 1979, simply called The Bermuda Triangle, is one of the more well-known that's dedicated to the area. Narrated by the familiar voice of Brad Crandall, the film talks about all the phenomena, including the green lights in the sky and specific incidents like the Marie Celeste. Satan's Triangle is a fictional fantasy adventure film with Kim Novak and Doug McClure and was released on ABC back in 1975 as a made-for-TV movie. This one goes the more demonic route, as is evident by the title, and doesn't have a happy ending. Also on television was the 1977 TV series Fantastic Journey, which starred Roddy McDowell, Ike Eisenman, and Jared Martin. The series follows a group of explorers who are lost in the Bermuda Triangle and are joined by a man from the future and a woman from Atlantis. The series has a number of tropes that can be seen in future series such as sliders and even borrows from Doctor Who in regards to the tool, a quote-unquote fork device that Varian uses, which seems a lot like a sonic screwdriver. The characters go through portals trying to find their way back home to their own place in time. While the series has become a cult classic, it only made it 10 episodes before being canceled. It was finally released on DVD in 2020 after years of not being available. It's of note that the first episode of the series features actor Ian McShane as a pirate. He'd famously step into another ship years later in Pirates of the Caribbean as Blackbeard. The Island is a 1980 motion picture that's based off of writer Peter Benchley's novel of the same name. Benchley's mega-hit Jaws was made into a feature a few years earlier. The author, who managed to make the sea terrifying enough already, wrote the screenplay for this film of his book. The island seeks to answer the question of just what was causing the disappearances and disasters in the area of the Bermuda Triangle over the years. And the answer is pirates, funnily enough. An entire island of pirates who have been patrolling the area for centuries and plundering ships unlucky enough to come near. When a modern man and his son are taken captive, they desperately try to get away from the murder of savages. The film wasn't a hit, not making back its $22 million budget, but has gone on to be a cult classic. It starred Michael Caine and David Warner and was scored by the amazing composer Ennio Morricone. We can't talk about the movies inspired by the Bermuda Triangle without taking a brief second to mention The Addams Family, starring Christopher Lloyd as Uncle Fester, who was supposedly investigating the Bermuda Triangle. 
Death at sea. He must have been hooked too when he disappeared and lost his memory. So where does all of this lead us in finding out what really is the cause of the Bermuda Triangle and all that has happened and continues to happen there? Well, not really anywhere. While many have come forward with theories to explain away the incidents, there's still no real conclusive answer as to what is happening in that large patch of ocean. The Triangle is good at keeping secrets. So we could keep searching for an answer. Is it aliens? Is it some sort of magnetic field? Or is it just some dreaded word, coincidence? We may never know the truth. All we can do is keep looking for something that's been missing and we may never find again, just like all of those unlucky souls on the Marie Celeste all those years ago. The answer could be lost in time, shrouded in a fog of mystery that will never be solved.